Wait, what? It's recording. It's recording. No, it, it stopped recording. What? I don't know. Oh. That's fine. I I read that the the internet was unstable. Yeah, uh, that's fine. No, yeah, but Halimi is recording, right? It was me recording. Yeah, it was related to this. Blow it up a little bit. Not that. The problem I passed didn't was recorded. All right. So um, I'll come again. So now we are going to talk about singularity container platform. Now we are switching gears from your workstation to now you are ready to move to Shaheen or IBEX, right? Now Shaheen and IBEX is a HPC platform. And there are, uh, this is a, a platform which uh, serves um, thousands of users all at the same time. The other thing is it's a batch platform. The third thing is it's an HPC platform. So performance is of question here, right? Uh, we are putting more and more restrictions. These are constraints, which basically means uh, the question is, is Docker a good platform for HPC? Unfortunately, no. The first thing that you started with was the prompt. Can anybody tell me what the prompt said when you were getting into a container on Docker? Absolutely. It had root privileges. And that actually shakes our system administrators and make them really, really uneasy. We don't want to make people uneasy, all right? So the reason why is that so is you're mounting volumes. You are mounting slash var, right? Imagine mounting a slash var of a login node which has 50 users all at the same time. They are going to step over each other, right? This is a big, big problem. That means this is a no-no business for a shared system. So what do you want to do? You want to facilitate it either by best practice, which we all know nobody follows it, right? The second one is put a hard limit restrictions on things, which basically means re-engineering the solution. That's the solution, right? Singularity is a container platform for HPC systems, especially as cluster, okay? So Singularity was open source community. Oh, that's my second slide, actually. <laughs> that's a good one. <laughs> so it was a research project at uh, Lawrence Berkeley uh, National Lab and uh, was developed as Scilabs. Uh, and now it is an enterprise uh, solution called Aptainer. But there is an open source community uh, supported uh, version is still existing called Singularity, right? So, I don't know if I should, I should. Let's put it full. Okay, so how do you interact with Singularity on our systems? If you can uh, please uh, log into your IBEX uh, logins, the uh, Toast uh, credentials apply. The email and the password is the same as your, uh, sorry, uh, the email password and uh, username is the same as your IBEX part, password and username. If you have issues, uh, let us know. Um, try ilogin. ilogin.ibex.clouds.edu.us. So it's installed as a module, centrally installed module, uh, module load singularity. Singularity CLI is pretty busy, it's, uh, it has quite a lot of options. I won't go through everything, but I will try to map what uh, my good friends, uh, Abdul Ghafoor and uh, Didier has tried to do in the morning uh, with Docker and uh, try to find similarities. These are a few commands. Uh, let's see there are a few sub commands of singularity that you should be concerned with when you're dealing with images, okay? So the whole idea of singularity for us is we are using the container runtime for one utility only, just to run the image. We don't want you to use singularity to build images. There is a very good reason for that. I'll explain it in a little bit. 
We recognize that Docker files are uh, universal. So we want to adhere to Docker files and the images coming out of it. We want to run those images on HPC with a few best practices that I will explain a little bit. So you need an image, you pull the image. You need to run the image. You can either exit the image or run the image, right? You want to interactively get into an image, you have a shell, right? Sub command. And you want to build an image, it is restrictive, but uh, I'll if I have time, I'll show you how to build it, but that's not recommended. Don't go that way, right? In some scenarios, you have to, like for example, uh, there are a few restrictions on entry point. Uh, you have to circumvent that restriction. And in doing so, you have to use the build. Yes. Uh, on. Yes. Are you in a content environment, base environment? If you are in a Conda based environment, do Conda deactivate and then. Okay, we'll keep going while uh, Kadir is uh, debugging that. So to pull the image, it's pretty straightforward, but uh, there is a little bit of syntactual um, difference. The first thing is you need to do all this pulling of the images into a a file system that likes pulling images and bring a uh, set on the system. Uh, there is a lot of, um, so the first thing first, the image, right? Anyone who is unclear about the image, what image is, I'm talking about Docker image here, okay? A Docker image for all intensive purposes is a compressed file that carries the whole file system of the container, right? It is an OCI, Open Container Initiative compliant format, right? Singularity is an OCI compliant container runtime. So if you remember my first uh, few slides, I explained that if there is these compliances, they can interpolate, right? So Singularity can understand the Docker format. But in order to run the image, it needs to first change the image and creates a new image, right? It's called singularity image format, right? The pull command is doing exactly that. It is going to get the Docker image from the repository, the Docker hub, bring it. By the way, this is the tag, okay? That's the version of the image. You can have multiple versions of the image. Can it be flavor? It can be the... Uh, uh, provenance of the software development. So what it is doing is it is going to Docker. That's the registry name, the uh, the the organization or the context where will I find the image? Mm -hmm. KRCCL is that for you? It will be your Docker name, the image name, and the tag. Right. What it is going to do is it is going to take that image, download all the layers of the image, and start creating a singularity image format. That will be a complete executable that you will see at the end, right? This needs to happen on home directory at the moment, at the moment, because parallel file systems are not very much liked by this kind of uh, task, right? So one other thing, sometimes the images are really, really uh, economical. Sometimes they are really, really fat, and I'll show you how fat they can be. One important thing is in that case, your slash temp, which is the default directory for all intermediate product of that process can actually get overwhelmed from capacity point of view. Relocate this to your home directory and you will be isolating the capacity and leveraging that. So these images are stored for you? Yes. There's no kind of sentiment. Not at the moment. We are not hosting any registries. Yes. And this is by virtue of, you see the size of the room. <laughs> so we don't want to you know, make a truck for two people. But we are open to that. That is a very good idea. Uh, if, if, if we are up for it. But we can store these images on many external pages. I'm going to exactly talk about that. So Docker is there. Absolutely fantastic. But there are other places you can actually uh, go to that are managed by someone else. <clears throat> Singularity has its own 
a library or a singularity hub. And this is what it is doing. It is going to that. Implicitly, it says library. Library means singularity Scilabs library. Uh, that name, uh, that uh, image, that, uh, sorry, that organization, that name, that image, and that uh, 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 tag. It brings down the image. It is going to be quicker because surprise, surprise, it is hosting a singularity image format already, right? Okay. So for Docker one, that's both that Yeah, this is not backwards compatible. So you cannot use that and then create a Docker uh, image, unfortunately, right? So it's one way change, uh, which basically means I'll go back to the workflow then how does it look like for a developer, right? So how you run it, you have the image. So you have this image, this is the set or singularity image file that you have created. You're putting it in a job script. If you're familiar with job scripts uh, on Ibex or Shine, you in the green, you need the resources, the 16 cores that you want for some time, you load the environment, but this time, surprise, surprise, you're not loading many environment there, right? You're just loading uh, singularity and an additional load, open MPI. Why would you use open MPI? There is a reason for that. Because remember, singularity is meant for HPC, right? You will have, uh, you would have uh, installed open MPI inside the image. It is sitting there, brilliant, fantastic, but it is optimized for the image itself. It is meant for portability. Where do you get the native performance or near native performance? You can hook the software that is installed on the system and expose that into the container so that wherever it is possible, like for example, MPI, it will use the custom built for the head hardware cluster uh, open MPI and then uh, launch the processes and communicate on that conduit, right? So, um, that's true. That's not singularities. So, very, very good point. So, it will be container, 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 container. Right? So, there are multiple containers that will remember the MPI run is outside the singularity uh, uh, command. Singularity here is the application. So, MPI run minus N4. That means run singularity four times. Now, M, uh, uh, one, zero, one, two, three will have MPI in it in that. MPI in it is going to take the context and then expose it and then connect everything together, right? And That's on the application too. Exactly. It has to have the MPI library implemented. Absolutely. Thanks for uh, helping me. Um, this is also doing something interesting that mm -hmm. is. Uh, um, that is uh, Shaheen specific on, uh, and, and may actually be IBEX specific in that scenario. There is a slash SW where this open MPI is sitting. If you don't put that in, open MPI will not be found in the container. This is no surprise to you, okay? Because remember, it's an isolation. Unless it is not mounted, it's not there, right? <clears throat> slash ETC is there. Because MPI, whoever is familiar with it, knows that resolve.conf is in the slash uh, etc. All the host names that are supposed to be on multiple machines are there. And Slurm is there and all other things are there. Right. Slurm, uh, singularity configuration, what does it do? Well, uh, singularity configuration, oh, this is not synced, is it? That's a... Oh, sorry, I have broken it down. I forgot my own work. <laughs> right, so again, going back to the UID and GID of your Docker. Remember, your root was UID zero. Imagine how many other complexities on your own you can actually create and make your life, life difficult. Whatever files you are creating, in whatever mount points you are creating, which UID, GID will it, will it have? The containers, unfortunately. Will they be accessed outside a container? No, but a shared file system has a native environment that you can use. Shared file system has a containerized environment that you are using now, right? So maybe some of the tasks are built for native execution, 
right? Compared to the ones that are uh, being done in the container. So what, what happens to the common data plane? Singularity takes this assumption further and becomes a dictator here. Says, I'm not going to allow anything else but the UID and the GID of the host. So everything will be overloaded. Even if you create a user in your Docker file, right, with a UID, which is not the UID in the host, it is going to override that. That's the first thing that's going to So it is going to make the container rootless. Rootless in a very specific, it is an opinionated uh, approach. Uh, no user other than uh, the user uh, on the host is going to work in the container. So this actually um, kind of uh, gives you uh, a limitation when you're bringing third party containers. Have a look at the third party containers. Maybe they are uh, assuming that you will be a user blah in that container. That won't work, so you have to circumvent it in one or, in one or the other way. So uh, let's say here you work. Yep. Yep. No, you don't have to. It will create its own because, and that's 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 the that's a good point. It is relying on a Linux uh, uh, modality called sub UID sub GID. So it is going to. Uh, modify the behavior of the coming in, incoming image when it is being containerized in the file system and will create a user of your own uh, as you are on the host if it doesn't exist. So you will exist in the container automatically, uh, but you will lose quite a lot of reliance on the user pattern that you had built in the Docker file if you had built. Right? And does it mean that let's say I have No, he will be him in the container, right? So here is the demonstration. Whatever user, whatever whatever I was in the Docker, I will not be that. Who am I on the host, right? This is who am I. Look at the UID and the GID IDs. These are numbers that Linux maintains and look at the container. So I am actually going interactively and I'm bold. Uh, it's in the bold, uh, I am the same. Right. This is always going to be the case. This is very important uh, for a lot of other purposes as well. Your slum jobs won't run if you're not that user, right? You know, um, what's next? Bind mounts uh, are sometimes managed. So in singularity, uh, we are opinionated as well. So we say that you will need Let's say on Shaheen, you will need the project file system, the scratch file system mounted automatically. So you don't have to bind mount it yourself. These will be mounted when you go in, right? In a vanilla container. Um, in Ibex, you have home directory, you have scratch directory, and your present working directory in both cases that is going to be mounted. So wherever you're, you're starting the container from, that's the present working or current uh, working directory that you are. Uh, uh, starting from. That is also mounted by default. All the ports are exposed on the host, right? So if you do minus IP0000 uh, on Jupyter in the container, it will be uh, exposed to the outside world. You don't have to do it manually, right? So remember that Docker, Docker command, Docker run minus P8888 to this, right? This is something that is done by uh, singularity. Absolutely. So the pattern now changes a little bit. If you wanted to change the port, surprise, surprise, what do you do? You change the port in the container and that will be mapped to the exact number outside on the host without you knowing, right? So this makes a life a little bit simple, but it is targeting the shared environment, remember that. Okay, for the bind mount, you have three options of the syntax. You can do on the command line minus minus bind, the source colon, the destination. The source is the directory on the host. The destination is what do you want to call it as a mount point in the container, okay? And the comma separator is going to allow you to do multiples of them. If And then destination 
is optional. If you don't call it that, it will be called the same as the host. So if you had slash project slash my project name slash my username slash my code, I can rename it as data inside the container and then approach it as slash data, or I can call it my code. The whole path might. I think I have. Oh, I I probably have it uh, in in uh, examples. So here is the command. Uh, sorry, there's a short form of minus capital B. Uh, which does exactly the same thing. And you can actually export a variable, an environment variable, which uh, singularity upon uh, initiation will read and will honor. That singularity underscore bind has the same syntax. Okay. So this is how the command line will look like. Singularity exec minus B, because it's the exec uh, argument, uh, the uh, file systems that I want to put on, um, these are not the file systems that are already mounted. Uh, the image name that I'm running and the command in the container that I run. Okay. This moment. This moment. Yeah. Okay. Right. Um, all right. Singularity shell. So as I mentioned before, you sometimes need interactivity to discover stuff. This is on host. I'm uh, checking the Python that I have. That's 3.6.8. When I run the Python um, image that I have, I have a different Python. So I am in a different shell, right? So this is where you start discovering your stuff. Uh, you can bind mount uh, the file system that you need. You have to because it's a container, remember? It's an interactive container. This is equivalent to Docker argument what? What would be the Docker run equivalent of this? It's just a check. Minus TI. You were putting minus TI, right? So this is singularity shell, right? Okay. GPUs are also available. You have to put minus minus NV. So this applies to run, exec, and shell, right? And the minus minus NV um, makes the container. Um, makes the container aware that GPUs are available in the resource, hardware resource, and are supposed to be exposed, right? So when I do that, and it is the responsibility of the image to have the stack, right? And when you do that, there's another important thing that is happening. The drivers will be exposed inside the container as well. Remember I was talking about, you know, kernel level uh, sharing. That's exactly what is happening here. NVIDIA SMI is not part of the container. It is coming from the host, right? So that exactly happens and it shows you which GPUs am I running on. Okay, I, there is a very, very rich repository by NVIDIA for custom built, uh, NVIDIA built containers. The promise on the uh, repository is that it is going to have newer versions every yay amount of months. Every branch has a different cadence and the optimization will actually give you benefits, both from the software version side and also from the optimization side. So the same code might actually start running a little bit faster. Um, so you, can, you need to have an API key created for authentication and uh, put it in your uh, uh, home directory. There's some documentation on how to do that. So you can do it on your own. Um, you don't have to do it right now. But when you have done that, uh, what we will do right now is I have a container fold, which took ages. The reason for that is it was a huge container. The container itself was nine gig, but the intermediate product was around 35 gig, right? Which came and went. Right, but it may actually be uh, may may actually be persistent in the cache singularity cache. So that if I do it again, those blobs will not be pulled uh, from the internet. So what I'll be doing is I'll be trying to run a Jupyter notebook out of the box from this container that was published by NGC uh, in a job script as a remote server, and that's the answer to the question that you were asking before. How, you are, how are you going to use a remote machine and then connect it to your laptop so that your laptop is your front end, right? And that's what the Jupyter's concept is. So let's do that. 
So. Okay. Uh, visible enough? So I'm going in the GitHub repository that you have. Um, so this is the path to this example. You don't have to follow it, but just in case you want to know, right? And I'm going in the GPU example. And here I have a job script. Let's examine the job script a little bit. Uh, I have the resource. I want one GPU and one GPU per node. I want CPUs, four CPUs for the uh, data loading part. Of, this is a deep learning um, exercise or uh, code. Um, I load Singularity. And this is where my image is. My image is a PyTorch 22.12. That means December release of PyTorch uh, with Python 3. And this is the NGC image, right? Um, I do some uh, boilerplate uh, to, to let me know how, how do I connect to my Jupyter notebook, right? Yes? Sir Ian? Yeah, they don't need to follow it, it's a demo, right, okay. So here I'm prepending everything with singularity exec. I'm bind mounting a, a, a file system, a, a file systems path, host file systems path which has my reference data. Uh, reference data is something that uh, Ibex uh, and Shaheen are going to manage themselves. It's a read-only file system, uh, which I uh, mount on uh, in the container as slash reference, right? I uh, put minus minus NV for GPUs. That's the image that I'm using. And then my command line. So look at the command line, Jupyter Lab minus minus no browser because I want it as a remote server, not a UI, um, minus minus port. So here in this line, I'm actually querying the system. Do you have a, um, a vacant port that nobody is using because it's a shared system, right? So I am uh, parsing that. And then I'm saying, please connect to that port only because by default, Jupyter tries to connect to plus one, plus one, plus one, depending on the availability, 50, 51, 52, and whatnot. So I don't want that to happen, right? Minus minus IP, I'm saying that the IP address is going to be that, uh, which I'm going to connect because I'm going to do port forwarding uh, uh, using the SSH tunnel. And this is the SSH tunnel command that, I, that will be printed in my output so I can copy paste it into another terminal and then start it. So there's too much words coming out of my mouth just to run this, but this is a job script. Uh, very seldom will you change this job script except for this part uh, where you want less or more resource, okay? G login. Yes, yes. You can do SSH, uh, yes, you can. Actually, you can, uh, you will then not ask for GPUs then. Right. Okay. So let me. So this is for me only. Uh, you will do s batch the uh, job script, but I am trying to uh, get more priority. I don't care. Let's see. So watch sq. Let's see when does it happen. Oh, it's running. Wow, I'm lucky today. Um, five four, and if I look at it, it it has started. It has started uh, Jupiter, but it is also uh, uh, printing this part, and this part needs to be started in a separate uh, terminal because it is SSH tunneling. So. By the way, this is in the documentation of uh, KSL, uh, uh, richly explained how to do this tunneling. Now, 
the Jupyter is running on uh, in the, inside the container and the container's machine name is called host name uh, by NVIDIA, but I would, because I have bound it to my local host. So let me try to connect it to my local host and I need to change the port as well, okay? Because I bound it to a separate port and the separate port is this one. Okay, I want to call it as localhost, localhost, fingers crossed, this will connect. Now, a few things that we will, so this is the file system, right? The PWD was bound uh, by default. So I can see my files, which are in the present working directory. I am in, am I in the container or not? Let's check it out. Uh, well, Singularity says singularity, so I trust it a little bit. Do I have the GPUs? Uh, let's check it out. Because I had put um, uh, because I had put minus minus NV, it it has at least one GPU. Slum actually puts a C group. It's kind of a a black box on top of a, a complete resource to cut it out and then give it to a user. It has given me one GPU. What kind of GPU? Well, I have a V100, okay? So let's go to the uh, Jupyter Notebook. Let's first look at what file systems do we have mounted in the container? Well, the file systems are, uh, some of them are, uh, as I mentioned, uh, bound by default, slash IBAC slash scratch is there, home is there. This is the current working directory that is mounted as a file system, right? And the file system that I wanted. And then this is the persistent D, persistence D, which is allowing me to run the GPU part, right? Which was bound by the singularity uh, automatically. Make sense? This one, this one, slash run. This is the user level uh, isolation on GPU stack that the system runs, it a singularity mounted it automatically so that I can run the uh, kernels or like SMI or something like that in, in, in the container. So the we don't have to, we don't have to even touch that directory because this is a system level directory and it, it all it does is let you run the GPU part in the background when let's say tosh.cuda or something like that invokes a kernel. This is the file system it looks at. Right, the, the underlying hardware looks at, CUDA looks at, let's put it that. And the driver part of it. Okay, right. Uh, so I'm doing, uh, I, and yes, I'll query the file system that I, uh, so the, the, these are the important bits I wanted. They are there. These are the train, test, and well data set. Uh, so let's run the, uh, cells. Don't worry too much about what it is doing. Let's see. So here I'm using that. Now on host, it doesn't exist as slash reference. Remember that? It existed as slash IBAC slash AI slash reference. So we have been doing this quite a lot. It's a mapped uh, directory. We load the model and then we say, is GPU available? Yes, Torch can see the GPU. Now the fun part for those who are finding still uh, the motivation, uh, everything was running <laughs> for some reason. So this is a, this is a funny thing to realize. I, I didn't install anything, right? So this is a very good experience already. Okay, so this has started, uh, this is the training loop. Let's go back to my terminal and check out how does NVIDIA SMI look like? Okay, I mean, my GPU is being thrashed 99%. So that's good, right? Um, so yeah, I am using the GPU. So going back to the slides, is there any particular question about this? Oh, let's say I'm, I'm so 
you will download the docker image for that yeah sif yes Your command line. There is no daemon to be started, right? So treat singularity as your application, and treat your application as the argument to singularity, right? That's the abstraction, the level of abstraction that we are trying to say. You were doing, let's say, blast, blah blah blah. You needed four threads. You used to set CPUs per task equals four. That's how you got the four threads. You will do exactly the same. This is uh, Naga is the expert here. <laughs> Sorry, Naga, if I'm wrong in some way, but you need to prepend it with singularity and the subcommand exec. That's about it, right? For Slurm launcher, SRUN, if it is MPI enabled, you need to have Slurm integration in the containers MPI, right? Uh, it's called PMI. Talk to us if you need some help on that. But vanilla, you can use MPI on, on uh, IBEX and it will work out of the box if it doesn't talk to us, right? So generally speaking, we are trying, to, singularity is trying to abstract the heck out of the thing, basically saying prepend singularity, the sub command, the argument if there is any like bind mount and your uh, command line that you are familiar with, okay? All right, what's next? Well, I flew through it. So okay. HPC containers. Um, any questions before I leave the podium? Okay, cool. So, Kadir. So, Kadir. I will ex uh, I will briefly mention about how to run a singular on Shahin. We are now moving to Shahin. Uh, since Chan is not available today, I can't make any live demo. So I tested these steps. They are working. If you encounter any problem at home, you can contact me, come to my office. Yeah, first of all, uh, we assume that we are in the login node. Then after login in Shahin, we load the singularity module. Then uh, as mostly mentioned, we have Docker images and we, we need to change them, convert them to singularity image files. So first of all, we uh, define a temporary directory for singularity to work. So that our, if we run multiple things, they don't get uh, messed up. And on the, yeah, this fourth one, our image is about MPI stage and page. And we make this folder to put our images, then co copy our image to this folder so that compute nodes can access Scratch and uh, the image in the Scratch area. We can get the example from the Git repository that you just cloned. And yeah, this is. Yeah, uh, this is about uh, running MPI stuff, parallel stuff on Shahin. Up to now, there were there was no MPI. So now we are starting MPI. I mean, for example, if you have or something like that, if you need MPI, uh, you should follow this. But there is a little bit more to this example as well, right? Because yeah. you are uh, building the code. You are compiling yeah. the code. Yeah, and compiling the code. Within the language. Yeah. This is the Git repository that we present the um, uh, training material. We go this containers 101 singular workflows and PSH. There will be a simple code that just prints the host name, etc. And what do we do? We get, uh, yeah, this is our image that I we convert to. Right? Hmm? This should be singularity 10, right? Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Singularity shell. Yeah. yeah. And then the thing. When we have this code. Okay, it's okay. I didn't put it there. But it's in the report. Yeah, it's in the report. I I should show it maybe. Oh no. Yeah, maybe <laughs> I don't want to mess up <laughs> the setup. Okay. We have a simple hello world code. 
here on the host. Okay, this is on the host. We we are now in the uh, inside the container and we have MPI CC command ready on the uh, container because someone else prepared the image and we just downloaded it and use everything inside. So everything is ready. So the exec tool name is hello and we exit the container and we submit our job which will run this hello executable. Yeah. So, Kadir, uh, if I may, a couple of sentences. Uh, so essentially uh, what Kadir has beautifully shown is he has pulled an image that has MPI, uh, uh, MPH version of MPI built in it, right? It was a custom image that was created by us for Shaheen and Ibex for portability, right? It will have a specific version of MPH. This is not the MPH on Shaheen or on Ibex, right? But there is a forwards compatibility between the modules that we have and the MPI. You took your code, your source code, the hello.c, and uh, because PWD is mounted automatically in the shell, you went in the shell and then you ran MPI CC on the code, right, to compile. You had a hello uh, output. Uh, file that you get as the executable that went down the current working directory and you used it in the document. So, this is the code. This is the sim our simple code, MPI code, which prints uh, the first surname executor and, and the job script. Yeah, this is the job script. Yeah. This is a regular job script. Uh, Yeah. Here, the image that we run, uh, we, we have to load a uh, single record on this folder. Yeah. And this is the exposed uh, host folders that are exposed to the container. And this is our exec tool, which resides on the host. So we have two examples. Uh, this is Nettie one. Uh, this runs just shows the host names. And this one uh, is the container. We have SRAM on Shahi. So we do SRAM and two tests in one node. And we launch Singularity. And Singularity executes uh, this executable on the host, oh, on the container. Sorry. If you want to run on two nodes, we run, we run SRAM, uh, yeah, two MPI tests on two nodes. And you will see different uh, node names. So, a couple of things. Uh, just to recap, um, you loaded these modules on Shaheen. When you uh, get onto Shaheen, MPI is already loaded, right? You just need to change the environment. So, there are compiler environments. One is the Cray compiler environment, Intel, and GNOME. We are swapping to uh, GNOME uh, so that we are using MPH GNOME. Um, there is MPI compatibility. Compatibility. Uh, this is just take it as a boilerplate. Uh, what it is doing is not of the concern. But important part in on Shaheen is you need to bind mount these uh, file systems. There's a big big problem with third party code then, because third party code on Docker assumed that uh, slash opt is a very good place to install stuff, right? This will be overridden by the host slash opt. You will not have your slash of, of the container image uh, that you had created. That, that, that's one of the custom best practice that when you are creating your own images, like in your own Docker files, try to install stuff in something slash something, make it up, slash software or something like that. That will exist even if you do that. This is important because the workload manager, Slurm, the MPI, and all the good bits that Shaheen can give you are coming from these uh, file systems. The other thing that is happening is we are using SRAM instead of MPI RAM. This is not a natural process. You have to have an MPI built in the container image that is capable of SRAM or SLAM. We did that. That's why we are pulling the image from our repository, right? Uh, the vanilla open MPI or MPI may not work like that. 
It's so oh, sorry, did you bind? Yes. And now it's slash off with this. Yes. So does it mean that like I mean if it because it cannot and these are like yes, yes, it can't write anything here. No, it is not writable, it's readable. And that's why like we have to have like a different thing. yes. Inside you you bring your own conda, bring your own whatever you are doing, slash software or something like that. Just call it something else. I'm actually trying to say the best practices as we go along. Yeah. Thanks. The second example is uh, climate data operators. I think it is uh, used a lot in weather research. Yeah, in order to run it again, modulo singularity. Uh, and you be a you convert data image to similar image and put the generated image to your scratch area. Then you run it like this. Uh, I just put a version, I just print the version. And this is on the login node, but it is for testing only. If you want to run run on compute nodes, you have to get the Slurm script. This one. And uh, you can run the image like this. And this is the executable inside the singularity, and you can print version or List of operators available in CDO. And open form, uh, com computational fluid dynamics code. Uh, I only include a single node run. You can run for multiple nodes also. We again, there is a ready image on the uh, Docker page of key uh, cost uh, infra uh, yeah web page. Then we again generate the singularity singularity file from Docker image. Then to run the to run open form, we get again there is already script in the GitHub repo. You get it. This is the script I put it here. I skip some of the parts to explain to give the whole view of the batch file. So we load the required modules, then we we should do some LD path exec uh, to expose the required libraries to container. Then here we want these folders. By the way, this is using OpenMPI, not uh, FreeMPI. And we are also exposing opt and etc. Then we are copied to pirate files uh, to current folder. We we'll later uh, pass it to singularity here. And uh, this is the image uh, file executor for the fluid dynamics code to run. Then, uh, for example, this secret belongs to, uh, you can find it in the GitHub repo. Plus some cleaning, I think. Then, yeah, for example, we run, uh, since we are using OpenMPI, we opted to MPI here. We run Singularity with one uh, MPI test. So, in uh, you know, OpenFarm uh, open has many steps. So, these are the first steps. And output is uh, recorded in, each step is recorded in a different output log file. So here, for example, we run six MPI uh, tests to do, I think, the simulation, uh, and it is recorded in this simple form dot log. And yeah, after programming, after container executes, uh, we have these folders which are generated by our, by our code. For example, we run six uh, MPI nodes, MPI tests. To the, to the uh, simulation, and we have this log of that one of the steps. So if you see this after running uh, your container, it means you have a successful run. Anything to it? Oh, can you go back to the yeah. JavaScript? So one thing that you might have uh, realized is we are doing this twice, this operation, which basically means something very same in the two lines, but we are doing it in a different way. 
There's a reason for that. The first one is uh, we are uh, appending the gray LD library path to the library path for some reason. Okay. But that is duplicated on the second line again with some extra stuff. But that variable has a different name, singularity env underscore. So singularity env underscore is a stuff name uh, for a variable which singularity honors that it will drop the singularity env underscore and will take the name and expose it in the container. So this becomes LD library path in the container with the value that you have. Does it make sense? Right? On Docker command line, it is Docker run n minus minus n, right? And then the environment variable and the value. Here it is singularity n underscore the name of the variable that you want and the value of the variable. Right? There's another question that I have for you all. Are we in the same container on all the steps? There are multiple steps there, right? No, we are not. So essentially, every singularity command is going to create a container from the image and run your workload and then will destroy the container, right? One, two, three, four, five, five of those, and then uh, simultaneous six containers launched here, all independent of each other, but are MDI aware. So they are talking to each other, right? So you need to understand this very, very. But they are, are they in the same node or distributed? They are on the same. The machine has been allocated. They're fine. But what I'm trying to highlight is a very important thing. This needs to be good enough work. Let's say it's three milliseconds or four microseconds work. The amount of overhead that you are going to spend on creating and destroying the container, it's not worth it. So if you have a for loop of one million and then you have a singularity in it, right? It's gonna bog down the whole workflow to the head. That's not a very good use of containers, right? You have to have encapsulation of workload, which is good enough in compute at least living for the amount of time, right? And the whole idea is you don't want to rework the software installation on things like Shaheen or Ibex. You just bring your own, right? Yeah, that's all for me. Thank you, sir. It was wonderful. So okay. again, again to the point, so it will be always in the same physical node or they can be spread around the, the machine? A job? has a request a, a job has a request and a request okay. allows uh, uh, allows you to run on a specific machine okay. right that machine can be a cutout of a bigger machine in ibex for okay. example on shaheen we allocate exclusive nodes now the container will always be on the node is that six containers will be on the same node. Okay, so that six containers will be launched as you wanted it to launch. Let's say if MPI run minus N6 okay. is the command, but you asked for two nodes with three cores each. Machine one has three cores, machine two has three cores. It's the job of the MPI run to put the six containers and then um, uh, talk, uh, make them talk to each other, right? Now make them talk to each other. MPI doesn't understand containers. Right, so how it does what it does. The inside the container has MPI two that was launched, right? Okay. And that library is going to say, I'm going to use this port 22, for example. But remember the ports are the same on the host and the container, right? So it will magically work because the MPI is going to talk to the uh, port 22. The container has the port uh, exposed. So it can actually get and receive the message on each container, six instances of the container, three here, three here. If you wanted to co-locate that, you have to request it accordingly. Say one node, six container, six uh, cores. Yep. <coughs> Thanks. All right. So back to the question of performance that was uh, asked right in the beginning. So this was an experiment that we used the same script, a vanilla implementation of OpenFoam, for example. And we ran the native build of that against. 
So Dr. Drew Kurum and I worked on it and we looked at the strong scaling. Strong scaling basically means the problem remains the same. The match points remain the same. The workload remains the same. We start adding the resource to it. So we started on two cores, four cores, eight cores, blah, 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 doubling it, squaring it up to let's say 2048 cores, right? You see the orange line, it starts to taper. You get diminishing returns of the resource that you're adding. Beyond 256, you're not scaling. This actually basically identifies something. If your workload is targeted to scale at this moment in time on Shaheen, we uh, recommend doing native builds, right? Oh. Say it again. Without. Without the containers, exactly. Because remember the first part, bare metal installations are meant for performance and optimization. This is a very good example of that, right? If you really want to containerize the whole thing and still scale, there are ways of doing it, but there are more involved ways, right? So we need to work on them. Say for example, this container was using OpenMPI on Shaheen. OpenMPI on Shaheen doesn't scale very well, right? So what do you do? You take your code base in the image from OpenMPI to first of all, MPitch, which is much more aligned. Maybe the same version, uh, at least uh, on, on, on Shaheen. Shaheen has gray MPitch, I understand that, but you, you come to the, uh, you know, the, the, the latest MPitch stable release uh, and then start from there on. Maybe you will get a little bit more benefit you may actually need to do some other optimizations on the compiler side as well in order to mimic what the code would have been if you had installed it natively. So there is work involved. So this is where we, where we come. We will help you out. Uh, if uh, we need to go outside, we'll go outside for the help as well. So, so just understand your scope of what you exactly want to do, which scale you want to run, and then make the decision. No doubt, uh, development becomes really, really easy, but then scale out if it is really important, we need to consider that. Some best practices, I'll just wrap up very, very quickly. MPI jobs, uh, minimum MPI version support for singularity is important to know. Open MPI 2, uh, Open MPI 2 and uh, MPH 3 are the minimum versions up which that uh, Singularity understands, but below it, it doesn't understand. For Shaheen and Ibex, use the built MPI uh, in hybrid mode. Uh, so essentially install the MPI in the container, but hook the uh, system MPI with it as we have been doing in the scripts, right? The third one is uh, preferred is to not install your software, as I mentioned in these directories, but install it in your own kind of directory slash software or something like that in the file system of the image. Um, you must uh, bind mount uh, the necessary file systems for the container, otherwise the job will fail. Um, uh, Singularity will say, I could not either bind mount it or could not find the file. Always pull the container on home file system. We have already seen that. We have been doing it again and again. And as I said, intermediate product of singularity from Docker to singularity conversion is hefty business. So your caches will fill very, very quickly. Uh, quota minus S will show you the quota, uh, the disk quota on home directory. Try to monitor that. And every now and then run singularity cache clean which will basically clean the intermediate product. You will spend a little bit more in downloading the image, but who cares? Um, bind mounting home and uh, uh, can cause issues. Uh, remember that, right? Bind mounting home can cause issues when you have a Python installation, a pip installation specifically in your home directory already. So home directory is coming from the native file system, right? On the login node, you run, for example, pip install minus minus user. You install something, let's say pandas. Your container has pandas as well. Now home directory will be the preference. You are using the wrong version. So this is a, a gotcha, right? There is no clean um, uh, way out of it, uh, but uh, what you can do is uninstall the one that you have in home or relocate it. 
Okay, so that's about it on the containers. Uh, any questions, any queries, any deep dives that you want, uh, let us know. And we're always there. All right. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you.